When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so they could go and anoint Jesus' dead body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they came to the tomb. They were saying to each other, who's going to roll the stone away from the entrance for us? When they looked up, they saw the stone had been rolled away, and it was a very large stone. Going into the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe seated on the right side, and they were startled. But he said to them, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He isn't here. Look, here's the place where they laid him. Go tell his disciples, especially Peter, that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you. Overcome with terror and dread, they fled the, from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. The tomb is empty. Happy Easter. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Come on, be excited. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. Rejoice. There is good news. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Let all the earth proclaim the joy. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. 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 All right, finally, y'all need to be excited. The tomb is empty and Christ is risen. We are going to worship together today. You're worshiping with Horseshoe Drive United Methodist Church, and this is Easter Sunday 2021. Last Easter, we weren't together. Today, we are together worshiping our Lord in the garden. What a glorious day it is. We are about to sing, Christ the Lord is risen today. If you have flowers and would like to come forward and put them on our flower cross, do that as we sing. If not, just stand back and sing to your heart's content the joy that Christ the Lord is risen today. Amen. Amen.
let us pray. You may be seated. Most holy and loving God, we thank you. We thank you for a beautiful Easter. We thank you that the tomb is empty. We thank you that we can shout hallelujah once more into the joyous sunshine and know that you are alive, that death has been overcome, and that we are able to live freely, forgiven with you through all our days. Lord, thank you so very much for the blessings you have put upon us. And we ask you today, Lord, as we continue to move with your spirit, as we continue to celebrate Easter, not just today, but for over these 50 days, to celebrate the resurrection, help us to remember this is why we are here. Jesus came as a baby, the incarnation. Jesus lived, teaching us how to be and to work together in the world. And then Jesus went to that cross, but rose again on the third day on Easter Sunday for us so that we could live freely with joy and happiness in all the days ahead, knowing that all of our days are eternal with Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray this today in the name of our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Get that. Amen. Okay, y'all realize Lent is over. 
they went to the tomb this morning and it was empty. I want y'all to see that and I want y'all to know that and I want you to be happy about that. Are y'all happy about that? Hallelujah. All right. All right. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God, yes. Yes, the tomb is empty and we are here together as your people, a celebrated people, an excited people, a thrilled people because, because life is eternal. Life is eternal with the one true God who's, who came to save us, who came so that we could be free from our sins, who came so that we could live fully and completely with an abundant life in this life, in this life, as well as the life to come. Thank you so very much, Lord. We ask you to keep our hearts open and our minds open to the word you are speaking to us and to your presence here among us, Lord. And Lord, though I am not worthy to speak for you, I ask that you use me as a vessel through which others hear you speak. In the name of our one true God, amen. 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 So in our first scripture this morning, the women went to the tomb. They saw an angel there, and the tomb was empty. The tomb was empty. They didn't know where Jesus was. And as that scripture finishes, they leave afraid. They leave afraid because they don't understand what has happened. But in our John passage, something different happens. It's the same in the fact that the tomb is empty, but it ends on a different note. So in our John passage, Mary Magdalene is the first up that morning, and she goes to tend to the body of Jesus. And when she gets to the tomb, she finds it empty. And she runs back and she tells Simon Peter and the other disciple, and that's all it says, the other disciple. And they run ahead and they go into the tomb and they look in the tomb First the other disciple and then Peter and they see Jesus' cloths lying there, the cloths that he was wrapped in and the face cloth. They have to ask us why are we crying unless we want to say I'm crying tears of joy because Jesus is alive today. We are people who can get through anything and we have gotten through some pretty heavy persecutions over the course of 2,000 plus years. And we will go through much more trial. Face of the Christian people. But we will overcome it. Because there is a promise beyond the grave. There is a promise beyond this life. Because God, because God broke into a sinful world, a broken world. God broke through that and said, I'm going to create a plan. So that you don't have to live with your sin anymore. Yes, we're going to sin. Yes, we live in a broken world. But I'm going to send my son to forgive your sins. To forgive you so that as you sit here today as a faithful follower of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. And I'm going to send my son so that your sins can be forgiven. And he is going to overcome death so that not only your sins are forgiven, but that I will promise you life eternal. And when this life passes, that won't be the end. There is a glory yet to come, a glory yet to come. When, when Christ comes again in victory, we will all feast at the heavenly banquet and we will be one people with God for eternity. Are you anybody excited about that? Yeah. Okay, thank you. You got masks on, so it's hard to see if you're smiling or angry or not. So come on. Thank you. Yeah, yes. <laughs> This is an exciting time, and this is why we are here as the people of Jesus Christ, and this is why we don't live like everybody else. You see, it's easy to fall into living like everybody else because the world wants us to be miserable. And you think back to the scriptures, even the Israelites who Moses was getting out of Egypt, they had to wander in the desert for 40 days, and even then they said, can't we just go back to Egypt? At least we knew who the enemy was. And we today, all these years, and we're 5,000 years outside of Egypt, but all these years have passed and we have Jesus Christ who frees us for our sins, but we sometimes still say, can't we go back to the way it was? At least we knew what was bad then. Nobody wants to go back. No one wants to go back to Egypt. No one wants to really live with the misery we had before. We need to live in the future. Whatever the future brings, live with Jesus Christ, knowing that Christ will overcome. And yes, the future is scary because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen next week or next year. And we know in a broken world, bad things are going to happen. But we live with Jesus Christ. 
and we live with a resurrection. So again, if Christ can overcome death, Christ can overcome anything. So instead of being the people who want to moan and groan and go back and say, let's just go back to what we knew before because it was at least comfortable. It wasn't happy, but it was comfortable. Let's lean into the future and say, look, if Jesus can overcome all that we've dealt with so far, Jesus can overcome whatever comes next. So let's live into the future as the people of God. Let's live into the future as the people of Jesus Christ, people of the resurrection. We are Easter people. So I want you to live like your Easter people, which means live like your sins are forgiven. And when you make a mistake, repent, say you're sorry and move forward, but live like your sins are forgiven and you're not burned down by the world. Live that you know that tomorrow you may die, but that that won't be the end for you. Live like you don't know what's coming up next, but you're willing to give it a shot because, hey, Jesus will be there too. Live as if you are truly a follower of Jesus Christ, not dragged down by the world, not caught up with what the world tells you has to be, but live by Jesus Christ in the scriptures and know what can be, what truly can be in a world full of love and full of grace and full of joy. Christ promised us life abundant, life abundant. Are you living your life abundantly? Even with a mask, even with restrictions, go. Are you living your life abundantly? Because that is what Christ went to the cross for. So that we could live a full life in this life. Yes, in the life to come, but in this life as well. So that we could live with joy. Yes, we'll have sorrow. Yes, we'll have brokenness. But we can still live with joy because we know Christ will overcome. We can live a full life even now because of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Yes. Can I get another hallelujah? Hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. prayer. So I'm going to open to some prayers I always do, but if you have needs on your heart, I want you to call them out. You can say them silently or you can call them out. But if you have a joy on your heart, a celebration, just an appreciation for the day, I want you to call that out too, because sometimes we need to let Jesus know we're doing all right and that things are good. And sometimes we need to pray prayers of gratitude for what we truly have. So let us pray with joyful hearts today. Almighty God, what a blessing it is. What a beautiful day. You allow us to gather in new ways. It's not the old, but it's new, and that's okay, because we're still able to get together, and what a joy it is. Lord, thank you. And thank you for the beautiful flowers and the springtime and the true sh glory that your hand is at work in all of creation, not just in our lives of all of creation. And thank you, no matter what time, day or night, whatever state of mind we're in, we can come to you in prayer and you will hear our prayer. So at this time, as we lift up the needs on our hearts, let us also lift up our joys to you this day. My family. The fact that we're here, amen. 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 Right. 
Right on. Amen. 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 We might remember that in this time of joy, it's not joy for everyone, a member of our family, the Cooks, have experienced the loss of Abby, Mr. James Cook. Mr. and Mrs. Cook are two of the nicest, warmest, friendliest people I've ever known in this church. And my heart goes out to her and her children right now, and I ask that everyone keep her in their hearts and in their prayers. Asking prayers for baby Bryce. Lord, we know that even this, in this life, there will be loss, but because of you, there will be hope. We know that in this life, there will be injustice, but because of you, we are ready to work against injustice. We know in this life, there will be violence, but prepare us so that we can work to fight for peace. Because in this world, you bring peace. Lord, let us live as the people you created us to be. Work within our hearts, our minds. Transform us to be the people that you created us to be and allow us to be the church you created us to be. And we pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
don't have them, raise your hand. And Reagan, if you'll keep an eye out for anyone who doesn't have one so we can make sure they all have their communion elements together. If you don't know the responses and you don't have the responses, that's okay. You can just follow along. If you do remember them from heart, just speak them out. Christ, our Lord, invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Pray with me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my covenant, blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And with the confidence of the children of God, we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You may take the body and blood of Christ given for you for this day, for eternity. had to get over there. <laughs> he had to come back. 
Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. We have received, we have been fed with the glory that is God, and we will go into eternity with God's glory and God's resurrection with us. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Our final song, our final prayer today, He Lives.